went back to Florida. Woo! The weather's so much better here. I'm so happy to be out of the cold. <laughs> this video, I don't know if I would classify it as a, a good thing, a bad thing, a sad thing. What do you think? What do you mean? What's what I'm doing right now? Oh, Are exciting you? thing. Okay. Yeah. So you're excited? Yeah. All right. I'm very excited, but I didn't know how you how you felt about this decision that I made. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? We made it. It was a, there were some hesitations about certain things, but I pulled the trigger and Pete is in full support. Yeah, she kind of is, not gonna lie. I feel like I've been here before. Last time it was with the black car. And for financial reasons, I had to say goodbye. But now since you guys were able to see into the future, you understood that when I said goodbye, I had ordered this car that replaced some of the things on the black Turbo S I wasn't fond of. Most importantly, the color, which drove me nuts with all the dust here and I got chalk because it was the color of concrete. Now I love this car, but unfortunately in this video, we are saying goodbye. If you have an e-commerce business, you know that high shipping prices are the number one reason for abandoned carts. But the sponsor of today's video has a solution for you and it's called ShipStation. ShipStation's Fortune 500 discounts are gonna help you lower your shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. All the automation you can put into place with ShipStation for your shipping tasks is gonna save you a lot of time that you can use to grow your business and work on your brand instead of working in it. I know it sounds scary and I can remember our first time switching e-commerce platforms. I was so nervous because it seems like a huge change, but I got a free trial for you. It's quick, it's easy. And I know the second that you try it, you're gonna be hooked. You're gonna get up to 84% off UPS and USPS rates. And if that's not enough, my free code is going to get you two months of ShipStation for free. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-com platform with ShipStation. And 98% of the customers that use it end up being a customer for life, which is gonna be the case for you. All you gotta do to keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation is go to shipstation.com forward slash AdamLZ and sign up for your free 60 day trial. Shipstation.com forward slash AdamLZ. Really easy to remember. They've helped both LZMFG and Drift HQ tremendously and I'm massive appreciative for them sponsoring this video and continuing to support the channel. Find out more information in the description box below. Look, this video is gonna be kind of uncovering some of the things with this car where I feel like I went wrong. One of which is the interior. I love the red and honestly, it's probably one of my favorite things about this car, but the 18 way seats, even though on paper, they should be more comfortable than the buckets that were in my GT3. For whatever reason, the bottom cushion is kind of hard and me having chronic back pain, it made me not want to drive the car that much. I knew it with the previous car. I knew it with the previous car. I don't even know why I do this anymore. <laughs> this whole YouTube thing's getting old. I should have known it with the previous car, but for whatever reason, I was scared to go buckets in a turbo thinking it would hurt resale. Should have done it. It's sad that I'm literally trading this car in before my wheels came for it. If you remember, I had the powder coated black wheels off my last car. I got them refinished and they showed up like the day before we left for Vegas. So I never got a chance to put them on the car. So it's probably the longest I've owned a car where it still stayed on the stock wheels, but they look pretty good. So it's not the end of the world. Like our other Porsche videos, the main thing we have to deinstall is the exhaust. It's actually the only mod that I've done in this car apart from lowering it, doing an M engineering tune. And is that it? That's kind of sad. Yeah, that's actually it. That's really sad. <laughs> I owned this car for about six months and I definitely didn't get to enjoy it as much as I would have liked. With that being said, we did have the floods so it was trapped in my garage for like 20% of that time. Then we had the Invitational, then I was gone in Vegas. But a lot of my friends got to drive this, which makes me happy because it is really like one of the best cars that money can buy in my opinion. I think because I just already lived through it all before, it didn't leave that much left to be excited for. One of the, the biggest problems with this car, in my opinion, is that it is so fast that it's hard to enjoy. It's, it sounds like such a ridiculous first world problem, but like, you know, in a Miata, you can drive full tilt, foot to the floor, banging gears with the biggest smile on your face, this car, you can like launch from a stoplight and in the matter of two seconds, you're going over the speed limit. So it's kind of hard to enjoy the car for what it is. I really enjoyed having it up in the Smokies when I took it up there. I guess that was the black one. That wasn't even this one. But for all intents and purposes, it's weird to say that in Florida where we have the most highways and straight line roads, I enjoy the slower cars because I can drive them faster because we don't have corners. It doesn't really make sense, but it makes sense to me, I promise. Definitely a little bit easier to take off than it is to put in. Saying goodbye to the JCR titanium exhaust. 
Unfortunately, what we're trading this for, this will not work. I think the best memory that I had with this car was actually something I never recorded. We were on the highway and we were abiding by all the highway rules. And I forget who's driving the Turbo S, it might've been Jimmy. I was driving the, uh, the Chaser, the one that makes like 750 wheel. We lined it up for a roll race, you know, from a modest speed to not that fast. The Chaser, which has really, really, really short gearing, was at the top of fourth gear, pulled on the Turbo S. So at that moment, I decided, well, why do you need a Turbo S when you could have a Chaser? that is four seater and is faster than the Turbo S, as long as you're going fast enough to not let the 235s be a disadvantage. John's back, we're working on the porch. Actually, I, actually, I'm back. <laughs> you know what I meant. So we gotta, we gotta rotate it in, I think. Oh yeah. Let's rotate these down all the way. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I just, I don't, I just work here. See, this is the part where I should have thought harder. Yo, Han's gonna kill me. No, <laughs> Me? The audio quality. Professional. Big. Right. Adam, remember you have to narrate everyone. Yeah, no one can hear you because I'm the one with the mic. Stop. That was loud, right? Yeah, Sean can say all the rude remarks he wants. No one will hear him. Yeah, big shout out to Butters. I wish you were here, Butters. We we used a mic, mic for you. It's not taped to my chest, but no, it's, it's not South Park. No, damn. He wishes. No, dude. If you don't pick that up, he's gonna hit you in the. Head. I'm not kidding. Why is he jumping up and down? My arms hurt. Yeah, his arms hurt. Right? Yeah, so I think I was supposed to put this clamp on here first. I think that's where I messed up. Yeah, yeah, we're good on the filming, Mike. <laughs> you gotta make it a quick montage of stuff just falling. This is how you know I didn't own a car long. It literally still has the tag from the dealer on it. I never. Dude, this is the third car in a row. I never set up the center thing. Like you, you're supposed to like put your name in and then you oh. get it. Like I just drive it in guest mode. It's pretty pathetic. <laughs> it's like you had a f uh, Uber the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. New car's gonna be here soon. I'll explain more. It'll all make sense, I think. Hopefully, maybe. First impressions, the uh, the hound's tooth feels weird on my bottom. It's got, it's like I got grip tape underneath me. That, and I realized the thing isn't even broken in yet. These things break in at like 900 something miles. It's got 544. The Touring also has all this cool uh, like textured leather on the dash here and here. I'll have to get some better shots of the interior, but definitely a vibe in here. Zach from Porsche of Naples is here again, hey doing guys. another car swap. Thank you for coming out here. I really wanted to come visit the dealer, but short on time. No biggie. So the question is, I know the, the orange car dropped it off. It sold in a day. Yeah. The black car, how long did that take to sell? Probably about the same. What do you think about this one? A couple days. Yeah? Yeah. She's It'll pretty gone fast. She's pretty perfect. So yeah. whoever, whoever gets her is going to be a happy person. I'm going to miss it, but I think I missed the GT3 more, and I'm really excited to uh, jump into the Touring. There you have it, the new GT3 Touring. John, I know you didn't like it at first. What do you think now? Still don't it like it? It looks way better in person. It needs the wing. Yeah? The wing is, it needs the wing. Booth, what do you think? I like the other one better. Yeah. Which one, the purple one or the, the chalk one? Oh, purple. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, the purple one's dead to us, so yeah. we don't, we don't. Stick shift. Yeah, yeah, I got, the, I got the stick. The slump butt, definitely not my favorite thing, but I got a couple ideas on how we can fix that. Oh yeah, you got ideas? You know how that there's that plane that has like Odd the the, the droop snoop plane? It's like that, but it's a it's a slump butt. <laughs> Stop looking at it. <laughs> Literally Damn, one, minute, one minute into owning the car and I put a chip in it. I'm such an idiot. It's gonna cost you. Yep. This is what I'm excited for. Butt pads? Actually I thought it would be the Alcantara. 
No, they're not on the tour. Oh, no. I was just going to cover the plaid. Yeah, I don't want the plaid. The plaid's got to go. The hound's tooth. So, this is what this will look like. Yeah, I think that's better. Yep, way better. All right, I'll do that later. <laughs> Pete, I have acquired an interior that matches your coat. What do you think, sir? Oh, he's out. What do you think, Colette? Do you like it? I love my new car. Yeah? It's so nice. Thing. Yeah? But I know you already got new seat inserts. Yeah, yeah, you knew the first thing. The hound's tooth got to go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The dogs like it. He was sniffing it for a while. I already put a big nick in it. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I heard. Not surprised. Can't resist the urge to snip. Must snip. This is how I know this car has never been tracked. Other than the fact that it hasn't hit break-in, you can see the sidewall's never even been used. You can still read, there's like a little Michelin serial number here. Where like all my cars, I usually roll over the sidewall, so it's all crumbled like as far down as here. Hey Pete, does it look like the exhaust has been modified? Does it look stock under there? He's checking it out. How he start sticking a dump under there? How'd it look under there? Pretty good? Yeah, all right. <laughs> what a weird place to sniff. It's under there. He's like, yep, it's still got cats. <laughs> He doesn't like cats. Nope. He doesn't like them. All right, before I dive too much into the new touring, I want to give you a little bit of backstory. You guys know I've now owned two turbos and I had the GT3. And I will say the GT3, I really didn't fall in love with until that last trip in the Smokies. I feel like once I had it tuned, I had the exhaust in it and I had it lowered, it really felt special. Because when it was stock height, it just wasn't doing it for me aesthetically. And before it was tuned, it was just kind of lacking that power down low. But the M engineering tune waked it up a lot. Fell in love with the car, and then you guys, of course, know what happened. And I'll be honest, like, even though obviously we were plenty okay, it could have been a fatal accident, and it's kind of scarred me a little bit. And I told myself that I probably would never own another GT3. Even driving my buddy Sean's GT3 after the accident, the interior still feels so similar. It just reminded me way too much of the accident, and I didn't want that again. And I wasn't really considering getting a GT3, but Porsche of Naples hit me up about a touring, which I never even thought about considering getting, but where I was feeling with the Turbo S and kind of uh, not enjoying it to the fullest because it was literally too fast and really missing the front end on these GT3s, they switched over to uh, double wishbone in the front from the McPherson. The Turbo still had the McPherson and a lot of the roads here aren't the greatest and the McPherson on the Turbo S pulls all over the place where the double wishbone feels smooth as butter, which is weird, right? Because my GT3 actually felt more like a proper, smooth, comfortable touring car for me than the Turbo. The biggest thing though for me, back pain, which is right now honestly worse than ever after the long shoot in Vegas. The buckets, for whatever reason, distribute my load better. So less weight is on the pressure points, so I can go on a longer drive and feel comfortable. More than anything, of course, you guys know, I've always been a GT3 guy. I've had my RS, I had the purple one. And now, even though it may not be that obviously a GT3 to those of you that don't know, it's basically identical to a GT3, but without the wing, and the interior has a bit more leather. Got a leather steering wheel, some leather accents around the dash, and then this is actually like exclusive manufacturer interior, which, although I probably would prefer black, I feel like the, uh, the tan kind of sets the car apart. It's a cool contrast with the Meisen blue, which is a paint sample color. You know me, I'm a big paint sample guy, just because I don't want the same car as everyone else. Um, but again, it won't feel like the same car that I had before. I feel like the, uh, the thing, the elephant in the room that you guys are all probably wondering, why isn't Adam getting the new GT3 RS? I've said it before in videos, I do have one on order, but I actually found out that it is going to be a pretty late delivery. Could be as late as early next year and already feeling how I was feeling with the Turbo S. I figured moving into this would not only potentially be a better investment from a resale perspective, I think it will hold its value better than the Turbo S. It's also the car that I think will bring more smiles and make me happier than having the Turbo S for another year when I'm already feeling how I felt about it. Unlike some of the older Tourings, these cars actually do share the exact same suspension and this one actually has front axle lift unlike my other car so I can dump it still be able to raise the front end up um, aesthetically though you might notice the front bumper is painted I hated the black on the GT3 at first then it grew on me but the touring I think is kind of cool it's got a little bit different look the all blue mirrors though I think gotta go so I got the carbon caps off my other car I think I'm gonna slap on it's got the black LEDs on it silver wheels are cool with the carbon ceramics silver uh, side markers the front clip is PPF'd on the car which I'm stoked about the rest of the car is not. I don't know if I'll necessarily do it, but looking at this car, it is going to need a paint correction. So I might go visit uh, good old Matt over at Obsessed Garage and dial it in with him. It's always so hard to capture on camera, but 
there are quite a few swirls. They don't look too deep, it just looks like someone probably dry wiped the car at some point. So there are a few little surface scratches that will polish out no problem. Not sure how I feel about the, uh, the side sticker. Some of the Tourings have like a, a chrome uh, window trim that I think might have tied in well with the silver, but the black isn't bad and I think once I maybe change wheels and add some other accents it'll darken the car up. The biggest thing on the Touring that I don't like, the lack of wing is cool. I think wingless GT3s are sick, but they have like a little bit of a factory duck bill built in instead of the, uh, the slump butt. So I'm gonna see if I can find a GT3 rear deck lid to put on it. I don't want the wing, but I feel like if it had a little bit of the, uh, the GT3 duck bill in the back, it would uh, be a really cool look for the car. I was fortunate enough to own both the turbo and the GT3 back to back and experience them at the same time. And that's kind of what gave me the confidence that I need another GT car in my life. And of course, we are still manual. And the main reason for this, obviously the new RS is not available in manual. So if I was gonna own a car to fill that buffer period, I thought it'd be cooler to still experience a manual car and then move into PDK once the RS comes. Interior has uh, this carbon trim here, which is pretty cool. I told you I love this little accent. I think the, the center uh, cluster might be a little different. It's got the deviated stitching on the wheel and silver, which is pretty cool. Door panels, got the bow surround system. Overall, interior is pretty cool. I don't know if I'll do a cage in this one. Might keep it a little more simple, but more than anything, I'm just stoked to enjoy this car. I miss it a lot and uh, I got another one. This is pretty rad. Lucky for me, I'm a pro at doing this. This is now the, I don't even know. I've, I've done so this many GT3 like exhausts. Fifth. But the key thing about this is I don't go to this dealership and I don't take off the rear bumper or the trunk like you're supposed to. Because I figured out if you're doing an exhaust on these, all you gotta do, break this away, pull off one of the headers and then you can actually get the exhaust off. Because I hate removing bumpers on Porsches. They're super easy and they're super easy to put back together. But there's always a risk of something getting damaged, scratching something. Also forgot to mention, of course, haven't even driven the car, Got to put the exhaust on. Got the Dundon from the uh, the GT3 they got in the accident. Shout out Advanced Collision for sending it my way after you did the old Inspector Rooney. And now I get to have this thing purr. Uh. It looks like the old uh, dentist that owned this thing before me. I wasn't that used to driving little cars. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll definitely do that once the car gets lowered more. But the cool thing about GT3s, they treat the lips as consumables, so they're super inexpensive to buy. Like you would think, oh, GT3, big money car, Porsche is gonna charge you thousands of dollars for a lip. On the previous gen car, it was like a few hundred bucks. Then you just get a new one and put it on, and then let the dentist scrape away. You know what's funny? You guys are probably pros at taking on and putting off Porsche exhaust because you've seen me do it so many times. It's really easy, it's, one of the, it's really fun too. Even if you're a GT3 guy and it sounds a little daunting, Trust me, if I could do it, you could do it too. <laughs> Great clip. Good clip. Rocks. Yeah, the dentist lived in a gravel parking lot. You know there's a door what? to the outside right there. Yeah, the, but the Swiss tracks, you don't see what's underneath them. So. <laughs> now the ECU are done. The FSM can kiss my ass. The cat is burning my hand. Ow. Good thing I got my Grios garage gloves on that are made for detailing and not working on hot cats. <laughs> also, fun fact, we keep cats on this car. So, just so you know, I just upgrade to the race cats. These cats are slow cats. Just so we remember, right down in your phone, we have blue in front and then we got the black in back. Remember, black in back, Michael, black in back.
one piece of the puzzle. This comes out. This is actually a fake OPF filter. We don't have them in uh, the States, but they put them in because they're in the uh, European cars. So you can like knock that out if you want a little more sound without actually interfering with the cat. Step one. Step two, I can pull the center muffler down. And then I can pull the other header. Obviously the Dundon setup sounds like insanely better, but one of the things that I feel like I don't touch on enough, there's so much weight savings, it's kind of ridiculous. This header weighs like practically nothing compared to what we just took off. You guys need a neutral? I don't know, did you check? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. What I just did is pretty sacrilegious. The touring is supposed to be the embodiment of class and understated power and this like package that isn't loud with the big wing and stuff. And I went and put a loud exhaust on it. Cause guess what? It's my car and I like to hear the beautiful sounds of 9,000 RPM out of my Porsche boxer motor. And of course the final touch to let the memory of my first GT3 RS live on, the OG LZ GT3 plate. Uh, worthy mention, my old GT3 that got crashed is actually living on through another YouTube guy by the name of Matt Armstrong. He's rebuilding it on his uh, YouTube channel. I did have the opportunity to buy the car back. I did think about it, but like I said, the memories of that thing, not something I really want to think about, um, but I'm stoked to make some new memories with this thing. I know to you guys, it's just another GT3 and the content, like I, I don't even know that any content will come with this, but the GT3 and the GT cars that Porsche makes hold a special place in my heart. I'm very excited to own one again, and I appreciate you guys watching this video. I was hoping to do a lap for you guys, but I forgot the very important thing that you have to get the exhaust valves coded out, otherwise it doesn't let you rev over four grand. So we'll get a lap in this thing, see where it stocks up against the Turbo S in a video to come. I have acquired an interior that matches your coat. What do you think, sir? Oh, he's out. Hey Pete, does it look like the exhaust has been modified? Is it look stock under there? How did he start sticking a dump under there? How'd it look under there? Pretty good? <laughs> what a weird place to snap.